I pray, take away any distractions. Take away any thoughts, Lord, that is not aligned with you or anything that the enemy is trying to put in our minds. I pray for a clear mind and a clear heart. Lord, I believe, Lord, that today you're going to save someone today. You're going to change someone today. You're going to restore marriages today. You're going to bless families today. And Father, you're going to heal people today. Father God, I pray that you may be clear to us today. That we may get out of this place with a renewed commitment with you, Father. I pray, Holy Spirit, work in our midst, Lord. Change and convert the atmosphere, Lord, in a way that you are directly speaking to us. Father, bless the word in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. All right, please be seated. So this is something new because I, I have you seated first. Because we're going to be reading a lot of verses today about the story from the word of God. But our series for this uh, month is entitled, Yes, Go. And I believe that all of you has already that yes. The premise of Yes, Go idea is very simple. It's the idea of saying yes to the Lord, but at the same time going for that yes. Because many people are saying yes, but they are not going for the direction that God has for them. I pray that as you... Uh, enter this new season in your life, I pray that your yes is strong and that also you will go where God wants you to go. Amen? Is that awesome? All right. So the response is, instead of let's go, you are saying, yes, go. All right? Yesterday, I have a crazy experience of yes, go. Right? We went to Star City. Wow, amazing. And now I realize I learned my hard lesson yesterday that I need to be very careful of the yes of my kids. All right? My son, I discovered, is an adrenaline buff. He wants to ride all rides. He beat all of us yesterday. Lahat gusto niyang sakyan, kahit yung mga pinaka-dangerous. Ang iba ay takot na takot, kami ay takot na takot, siya ay nagaganong pa sa... At patapos na yung ride, sumasabi pa yung, more! More! Kami, no more! <laughs> But it's amazing, so makai kami, and then uh, amazing kasi is a, 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 a good experience. And sabi ni, uh, alam mo yun, bilang tata, hindi mo mahindihan ang anak mo. Kasi tinitingnan ka ng anak mo na, Dad, you can do this. You are stronger than this. You are more powerful than me. You preach faith, right? <laughs> so wala na akong magawa. So, sasama na lang ako. Okay, let's go. I can do this. I can do this. You know what? Lahat ng inaral ko, lahat ng mga theological preferences ko, lahat ng mga ideas and quotes, nakalimutan ko na lahat, pati message ko today. So, kung wala akong ma-preach ngayon, pasensya na. But anyway, we rode in, a, in, in that roller coaster and crazy experience. But I like it. I love it. Pero ang totoo noon, I shout like a woman on the first... <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy experience, all right? Especially because I have a vertigo. So, ang ang nagyes na lang ako sa kanya yung isang yung pa, yung patambling tambling nga. Pero yung pa sideways, di ko talaga kaya. I will have a vertigo for one month, I think. Uh, but at least I did it. Uh, unlike dun sa mga kasama kong iba na. All right, all right. <laughs> I will not mention. But uh, anyway. It's, a, it's an amazing thing. So, I think, uh, isasama ko to sa discipleship. I think, i-require ko lahat ng mga leaders ay dapat kasama dun sa, do, do you believe by faith? Do you have a strong faith? So, yeah, sasakay tayo sa rides and uh, tingnan natin. And even, alam mo yung uh, overthinking and anxiety and thing, yung palang sagot eh. Alam mo yun, yung pag, pag nandun ka pala, wala ka na may isip eh, ano? Ayun, alam mo yun, yung nagsasabi ka, Lord, kunin mo na ako, pero pag nandun ka, wag, Lord, wag, Lord, wag! <laughs> and I'm just... <laughs> It's so crazy. But the crazy thing about it is that I realized ko dun, is that uh, amazing uh, experience is because you got to pay for it. Whether you take the ride or not, you have to pay for it. So it's up to you. So we, you pay for it, 700 I think, and then it's up to you. And it's, I think it's a brilliant idea. So uh, wala nang hassle, hindi ka na kailangan magbayad, wala nang pila. So it's up to you. If you want to get uh, take the ride, you go for it. If you don't want to, it's all right with you. But the thing is, I realize is that I think uh, uh, not undermining or putting down those people na hindi sumakay. Uh, uh, okay, okay. D don't take this personal. It's just a matter of using it as an illustration for the message, all right? So uh, uh, those people is uh, admirable. Uh, they, they are my friends. And uh, I just want to uh, qualify what I'm going to say. So para baka ma-offend. So 
All right. But anyway, uh, magkakasama kami as a family. But the thing is, we all paid uh, the whole amount, right? And it's up to you whether you uh, take the rides or not. So the thing is, uh, most of them, uh, some of them, ay hindi sumakay sa ride. So, yeah. And and here's the thing I realized. Habang nagpe-prepare, akala ko na wala yung message ko, eh, pero mas lalong nadagdagan yung message ko. And the message I got is that you already paid for the whole price. Right? You already said yes. You already said yes. Then why not take the ride? <laughs> you, you get the point? You get the point? So you already said yes. You already get in. You already paid the cost of it. And then get in. And then all you got to do is, alam mo yan, yung, yung, you're still happy, right? You're happy because you are looking at everybody. So, Whoa, come on. Iba yung experience na nandun ka mismo na ikaw ang sumisigaw, ah! It's so scary, but you get what you paid for, right? And I think that's the message for us for today. That's exactly what the meaning of the word yes go mean. That when you really pay for the price, when you already said yes with the Lord, if you have already decided that you're going to follow the Lord, enjoy the whole thing. You got to take the ride. And it's not just for you to observe, oh, this is happening to him. Oh, this is happening to him. Oh, it's happening to him. No, it's time for you to experience what God has for you. And not only that you're an observer, but you are really experiencing when you say yes, you're already paid for it. You already sacrificed for it. So better well, you gotta go for it all the way. And that's the meaning of yes, go. Amen? So that's it. That's the message. See? Kahit sumakay ka ng rights, may message ka na makukuha. Amen? Praise God. Amen? Yes, go. But the thing is, is that the text for today is that, nabasa nyo na to last time, but we're gonna read it in the message. It's gonna be flash on the screen. Okay? I hope you can read it because it's a little bit blurry. But here's the word that it says in Acts chapter 1, verse 1 to 8. I'm going to read it in the message, and it says in the word, Dear Theophilus, in the first volume of this book, I wrote on everything that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he said goodbye to the apostles, the one he had chosen through the Holy Spirit and was taken up to heaven. It says in the next verse, all right, next one. Is it there? No, you can't see. Sorry. All right, here's the next one, next verse. There it is. No, none. All right, here you go. Help me out. <laughs> there you go. Is it there? Not yet. Okay. So it says in the word that Jesus appeared for, with them for 40 days. All right? You have to follow this. After he rose up from the grave, what happened was before he ascended going back to heaven, it took 40 days. If you're reading the Bible, how many times you have already heard about 40 days? And 40 days is a, always a symbol and a picture. 40 days, Moses, Elijah, uh, 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 everything is almost everything. 40 days, the temptation of Jesus in the wilderness, 40 days. And then this one, resurrection up to ascension, 40 days. Pwede naman siya magpagka-resurrect, pwede naman siyang dumiretso lagad palangit, and hindi na niya kailangan bisitahin ang mga disciples. But why did he spend another 40 days and just to spend time with the disciples? You have to realize this, that on the ascension, that's the time that he gave the great commission. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. But he made sure before he issued that commission, before he tell them, he told them, go into all the world, into all the world he made sure first that he appeared with them for 40 days. Why do you think he has to appear for 40 days? And I reckon in the spiritual realm, can I just declare to each one of you? I believe that I'm not just preaching about 40 days as a concept, as a message. I believe that it's starting today. I believe it's starting today. I counted it 40 days. I, I hope I'm not wrong. I pray in 40 days today up to December 1. I believe that God will work something in your life. I pray that in 40 days, is there anyone here Now you're going to pray and you're expecting something to shift in your life for 40 days? Is there anyone here for 40 days? 
that in 40 days you are believing something will happen in your marriage, something will happen in your family, something will happen in your business, something happen in your career, and you are praying that in this next 40 days, even before Christmas, I'm praying that God will do something amazing in your life. Now here's a treat for you. I am declaring over you that in the next 40 days, the Lord will speak to you in a very special way. Not just on Sunday, but every time you wake up, before you're going to go to sleep, the Lord will be so strong in His appearance with you. 40 days. Come on, say it. 40 days. Now, you're going to wonder this thing. Pwede naman si Jesus, pagka-resurrect, dumiretso na agad pa langit. Bakit kailangan niyang balikan ng mga disciples niya? 40 days. Here's the thing that you need to understand. He got to do that because He knew He's going to be issuing a big commandment, which is go, but before the go, there must be a yes. You got it? And he has to appear to the disciples so that he makes sure that their yes is solid. Because it's one thing to say yes. It's another thing that the Lord will make it solid. And that's the thing that I'm going to be preaching to you today. I pray that you will have a solid yes. I don't know if there's a liquid yes. I don't know. <laughs> but I'm praying that you will have a solid yes. I'm praying that you will have really a yes. Because you have said a lot of yeses in your life. Uh, you have experienced since childhood up to many times you said yeses to many things, even bad things. I challenge you today, why not now, if you have the courage to say yes in all those things, why not in the remaining remainder of your life that you're going to say yes to Jesus? Nasubukan mo na ang lahat, but I pray na masubukan mo naman si Jesus once in your life, and you're going to say yes to Jesus. Why are you afraid of saying yes to Him? It's not about religion. It's about your relationship with Him. Religion never saves. Relationship will be the one that will save you. And that's the thing for 40 days. He has to make sure that this people has a solid yes. Kailangan ang yes ay maging solid. How do you make a yes solid? Do you want to know? Here's the thing. It should be tested. It should be tested. A yes should be tested in order to be solid. Because a tested yes is a solid yes. Do you agree? Come on, do you agree? Huwag na natin palalimin pa. Pasimplehan lang natin. Do you agree sa relationship? Kailangan ang yes tested para solid. Do you agree? Come on, mga mag-sweetheart, mga mag-asawa, come on. You understand na the more tumatagal, the more may pagsubok, the more may mga pinagdadaanan, hindi yan ang ikakasira mo, but it is just a testing ground with you. Ang question is, will you still say yes? Not only on the day you got married, but even today, that you have still that say, you're gonna say, I still do, I'm still saying yes. And you understand in a relationship, para matest ang yes, kailangan, para maging solid ang yes, dapat maging tested. Kaya sa mga mga bago mag-sweetheart, hintayin ko muna mag-away kayo ng matindi. Kasi doon nasusukat ang tunay na yes. Hindi yung yes na po, ah, pa-picture kayo lang. Wow! Saya na amin. Yeah. yeah. Hintayin mo na mag-away. Let's see your yes. And, and I want to tell you, uh, walang perfect relationship, but there's always what we call a tested relationship. A tested relationship will always be the proven relationship, right? Bakit? Kasi panag yes ka sa relationship, you know and you fully understand na kailangan subukin yung yes na yung kung saan tatagal. Madali mag yes, pero paano mo paninindigan ang yes kahit ikaw ay napapalibutan na ng lahat ng no? Will you still say yes? That even though the people around you saying no, or even you are hurting, or even you are in pain, will you still keep your yes? But I declare that today, not only in your relationship, not only for you as you love someone, or being a parent, but I declare to you today, in your relationship with God, I declare that you still have a solid yes. Why? Because there will be many times that the Lord will test you. You will agree with me that there will be challenges in your life. May mga bad times na mangyayari sa'yo. May mga bagay na ikakalungkot mo at parang ayaw mo na. But that's the time that the Lord is testing you so that He will knew if you are still saying yes. 
Because many people are saying yes just because it's good times. It's because people are praising you. Because you have money. Because you have everything. But what if those things are gone? Will you still say yes? I praise the Lord that it's no, that not those things are motivating you to say yes. You got to say yes even though in hardest times. For the days. For the days. I declare over you in the next 40 days, it will be uh, a days, days that will be the Lord testing us. But it's also the day that uh, uh, after that, yes, it's a blessing that you have never seen in your life because you have proven your love to the Lord. Will you agree with me na walang dapat patunayan ang Diyos sa yes niya para sa atin? He doesn't have to prove anything because he already proven it on the cross. He died on the cross for us. He said, who are going to go? Who will come down so that these people will be saved? Jesus said, yes. Will you die on the cross? Yes. Will you suffer for them? Yes. Will you die for them? Yes. And has proven it. He went to it and he proven his love for you. There's nothing more that he's going to prove for us. Walang dapat na patunayan ang Diyos kung gaano niya tayo kamahal. Tayo na lang hinihintay. Will you say yes? Will you, can you afford the, the remaining of your life? Will you just be live in a life of, I don't know, maybe, yeah, no, yeah. Will you, can you afford the remaining years of your life to be spent on uncertainty? When you can spend your life in security and certainty in Jesus Christ that is saying yes to you? Here's the thing, 40 days. Say it, 40 days. Is 40 days matagal? Yeah. I think so. Depende. Right? Kung wala kang ginagawa, matagal yun. Pero kung may ginagawa, kasi nakakaalam dito, 40 days, mabilis lang yun. Right? But the thing is, 40 days. I'm just wondering, bakit kailangan ni Lord mag-spend pa ng another 40 days? Pwede naman niya gawin lahat. But He has to wait. Here's the thing that you need to understand. The Lord will allow you to experience delays. Why? Because you understand that delays is also a test of your yes. Can you afford to still say yes even though the Lord will delay His answers to you? Because many times you want to say, Ah, gusto ko Lord, gayo na. Gawin mo na ngayon. Sabi ni Lord, what if 40 days? Can you wait for 40 days? I can wait. Can you? But the thing is, gusto kasi natin madalian ang solusyon. What makes us think? They took a lifetime of a problem at gusto natin ang solusyon ay overnight. Right? If kaya natin mag-endure of a lifetime of a problem, we can endure a lifetime of solution. Right? So it means that if it will take for you 40 days of a problem, if it will take you 40 days of solution, you're gonna bear it because God is testing you through delays. There will, there will be a time in your life that the Lord... See, are you relating to what I'm saying? Siguro ito naka-experience sa may pinag-pray ka, may hinihintay ka, ba't ang tagal mangyari? Ako lang ata, mga perfect ata itong mga kausap ko, amen. <laughs> Lahat tayo naka-experience ang delay. Delay. Hindi lang delay. Disagreements. You will agree with me that the disciples, they disagreed with each other. Ang number one na nag-away-away silang 11, yung isa wala na. Yung 11, ang pinag-uusapan, sino ang pinakamagaling? Sino ang greatest? Sino ang ganito? All of them has disagreements. And all of those things. And here's the thing I realize. The Lord will allow disagreements in your family, in your marriage, even in your organization, even in your group, to test your corporate yes. Because it's another thing to have an individual yes. It's another thing to have a solid yes that a group we're going to say, kahit tayo may mga disagreement, we can put it aside and we're going to follow what God wants us for us to do. And I can never allow the disagreement will hamper my assignment with the Lord. And if you can put down all disagreements and you're going to say, yes, parinaw kay Lord, then all of you can go together in one direction. The Lord allows disagreement so that to test your yes if it's really connecting for the another yes. Kaya nga amazing pag ang mag-asawa o ang family ay solid yes. But it doesn't mean walang disagreement. Kahapon lang, nag-disagree ako. Pa, Dad, sakay ka dyan. No. <laughs> there will be disagreement. 
But the thing is, disagreement is normal. Disloyalty is not. Did you get it? Okay lang mag-disagree. Pero ang wala sa question yung disloyalty. God allows you to disagree. But sabi ni Lord, wag naman sa point na disloyal ka. Why? Bakit inalaw ni Lord na may mga disagreements bago sila pumunta sa Great Commission? Because God is saying to them, Hey, you gotta understand these things. This disagreement doesn't define you. This disagreement will not hinder you, will not stop you. You got to work it out together with you. Because if you are not solid here, if I give you the Great Commission, you will not be able to be solid in following it. You will not see the book of Acts. You will not see how the Holy Spirit will fill you. You will miss a lot of things. And the Lord allowed delays in disagreement. And not only that, He allows you to experience disappointment. Who among you here experience disappointment? But can I give you a good news? Oftentimes, disappointments are His appointments. Did you get that? Disappointments are usually His appointments. Sa iyo, disappointment. Pero actually, may plano ang Diyos. What if hinalaw ng Diyos so that magising ka at makita mo, Lord, kailangan kita. Nabusubukan ko na lahat. Pero ikaw na lang, hindi ko pa nasusubukan. Today, I was disappointed. May mga bagay na hindi nangyari sa buhay ko. But praise God, dahil tinuro mo ako, manumbalik ako sa iyo at makita ko yung pagtiwala ko sa inyo ulit. Sometimes, God allow you to be disappointed so that you will know you're appointed. Na may appointment si God para sa iyo. And the crazy thing about this, lahat ito in the ni Lord so that we will have a solid yes. Kasi ang solid yes, kailangan, here's the question, you're gonna follow, okay? 40 days, say it, 40 days. Alam nyo ba many times si Jesus nag-appear sa mga disciples? And that's the thing you're gonna learn now. It's so, uh, it's a blessing to follow chronologically what happened uh, in those times. Kanino una nag-appear si Jesus? If you get the message last two Sundays. Kanino siya nag-appear? Nag Mary. Yung dalawang Mary. So, si, sa kanila muna nag-appear. And, and that's a proof that the Lord will always reward who's faithful. You get it? The Lord will always reward who's faithful. Hindi niya pwede i-take for granted ang isang nandyan palagi na committed. No. He will never do that. Kung sino ang committed, kung sino ang nandyan, He will always appear first to, them, to, to these people. But the thing is, after that, ay nag-appear siya sa two disciples, hindi pinangalanan. Two disciples walking, going to Im to Imaus. Cavite. <laughs> hindi po. Imaus. E-M-M-A-U-S. Imaus. Okay? So these two disciples, uh, walk, they, they walk going back to Imaus. Cavite. And while they were walking, they were talking. Alright? They were talking. And it was not named, who are these disciples? Nabanggit yung isa, Cleopas. I don't know who is he. But the thing is, itong dalawa nag-uusap sila, and they were talking. And it says, while they were talking, they were sad. Right? Here's the thing that you're gonna follow here. You're gonna follow is this. This two is coming from Jerusalem, getting out of Jerusalem, walking how many miles, going to Amos. And the thing is, Iniwan nila ang Jerusalem. Now, compare it to Mary na nandun mismo sa tomb. He's, she's so close. But his two disciples are so far away. Think about this. Jesus appeared to someone who is so close. But he can also appear to someone who is so far away. What does it tell you? It tells that God can live, can leave the 99 so that He can go to the lost sheep. If these people has been far away from God, the Lord will find a way that He can appear Himself to these people. That's why if you're feeling you're so far from the Lord, you are not too far away. You are not too sinful. You are not too wicked for God to reach out to you. He will always appear to you because He loves you. If he can appear to church people, he can appear to the people who are not even to church. Why? Because everybody is important. What God is saying today is this. He can appear to these people. Why? Because he got to test. He got to red redeem the yes. And these two, habang nag-uusap sila, ang lungkot nila. Yun ang sabi ng verse. While they were walking, they were sad. Sa tingin nyo, bakit sila malungkot habang naglalakad? Do you want to know? 
They want to know. Here's the reason why. Habang ikaw ay palayo ng palayo, palungkot ka ng palungkot. Galing sila sa Jerusalem, dapat magstay sila sa Jerusalem, pumunta sila ng Imus Kabiti, at naglakad lang sila. Nakakalungkot talaga yun, kasi layo nun. Hirap nun, siya, lakarin mo ha, simula ngayon pa Imus Kabiti, hirap nun. Kakalungkot yun. Pero pakinggan mo, ang sabi nun sa verse, kaya sila malungkot, kasi pinag-uusapan nila yung mga bagay na nangyari, na si Jesus namatay, and all this, nagkawatak-watak sila, and all this thing. And then the crazy thing about this is the more palayo ka ng palayo, I guarantee you, palungkot ka ng palungkot. Sabi mo, Pas, kahit pa meron ako mga bagay, no. You have proven it. Kahit anong meron ka, pag malayo ka sa Diyos, kailanman di ka magiging masaya. Subukan mo ng lahat, kailanman di ka magiging masaya. Kasi ang magpapasaya lang sa iyo pag malapit ka sa Diyos. Ni hindi ko binabanggit ang religion. This is never about religion. This is about your relationship with the Lord. What I'm trying to tell you guys is this. Pag ikaw ay lumayo sa Diyos, ikaw din ang malulungkot. But isn't that amazing? Kahit ikaw ay lumayo, pinuntahan pa rin sila ni Jesus. <laughs> And amazing, kung babasahin mo yung verse, yung verse is that naglaka, sinamahan yung dalawa. At dahil resurrected na siya, ang sabi sa verse, the Lord allow them not to recognize Jesus. Hindi nila nakilala na yung kasabay nila is si Jesus. Basahin niyo yung verse, sabi, sabi nag-uusap sila. Ay sabi ni Jesus, ba't kayo naglalakad at malungkot? It's simple. Ba't ka malungkot? Eh, pinag-uusapan mo kasi malungkot eh. Right? Nakaranas na kayo noon na magkakape kayo, magsasama-sama kayo, And then, ang bunga din, oh, grabe talaga, ano, nangyari, ano? Kakalungkot. The question is, bakit kailangan mo pag-usapan yung mga nakakalungkot? Na pwede mo naman pag-usapan yung mga positive na ikaw ay mapapasaya. Come on! Why you gonna talk things na mga bagay na toxic at mga negative na an unending ay mapapalungkot ka lang? Sayang yung kape na in-order mo. Sayang yung pagkain na in-order mo. Sayang yung aesthetic design ng restaurant kung ang pag-uusapan lang ay mga bagay na malungkot. Pwede naman pag-usapan yung mga masayang bagay na nangyayari sa buhay mo. Kaya sabi ni Lord, ba't kaya nag-uusap-usap ang lungkot niyo? At sabi pa, ang sabi ng dalawa, di mo kasi alam eh. Sinabi ha si Jesus, eh di nila alam si Jesus yon Di mo kasi alam. Ay, itong pagkasabi ng verse, ikaw lang ata ang hindi nakakaalam sa nangyari. Sabi ni Lord, ang amazing, sabi ni Lord, what things? Isn't that amazing that Jesus will ask that question, what things? He already knew. But why do you, he should ask, what things? Have you wondered the essence of prayer? He already knew what you're gonna ask. But he's asking you, what do you need? What things? Lord, may nangyayari sa akin. Ano nga yun? Ikwento mo. Because you understand that it's not just about giving you the answer. It's about you conversing with Him. Alam na niya ang kailangan mo. Ang kailangan lang ni Lord ay makausap ka. Because maybe in all your life, you're too busy. You're always saying with your own words and you're not listening to what God is saying. And God is opening up a conversation. What things? Anong kailangan mo? What do you need? And you prayed. And for the first time in your life, natutukan tumawag sa Diyos. Ang nagsabi ni Lord, yan ang kailangan ko. Mag-uusap tayong dalawa. And you will understand with me that communication is the best deal about relationship. Pag hindi nag-uusap, relationship can go wrong. But sabi ni Lord, mag-usap na tayo. Alam, sabi ni Lord, alam ko na yung kailangan mong yan. Alam ko may babayaran. Alam mo yan. Pero usap tayo. Anong kailangan mo? What things? Isn't that amazing na kailangan tanungin ka ni Lord anong kailangan mo? As ang, ang, ang power ni Lord ay hindi lang gusto niya ibigay yung gusto mo, kundi gusto ko niya makausap. Nasabi mo na lahat ang problema mo sa lahat. Nairant mo na sa Facebook. 
Pati yung mga walang alam na i-post mo pa. Pati anak ni Francis, dinamay mo pa. <laughs> But what I'm saying is this, bakit kailangan sabihan ka ni Lord na what things? Because He wants to talk to you. Yung dalawa, hindi nila na-recognize si Lord. And then, all of a sudden, sabi ni Lord, di nila kilala. Binasahan sila ni Lord from Moses. He laid the scriptures from the book of Moses up to the present. At ang sabi nito, galing naman ito? Sino to? Galing. Hindi nila nararap na mumukhaan si Jesus. Hindi nila inalaw. And then, basahin niyo yung verse kasi it's very interesting. Ang sabi pa nun, parang si Jesus na, pagdating sa Imus Kabite, nakarating sila. Tingnan mo, hindi napagod ang dalawa. Naglakad lang yun. Alam mo ba, pagkasama mo si Jesus, di ka napagod? Sa tingin nyo, ang pagiging leader, di nakakapagod? Nakakapagod. Ang pagsiserve, nakakapagod. Pero yung mga yan, ang mga nagsiserve, bakit walang kapaguran yan? Kasi alam nila, kasama nila si Jesus. Amen? Nakakapagod lang pag hindi mo siya kasama. Pero pag kasama mo siya, kahit anong ginagawa mo, walang kapaguran. Why? Because you love the person. Anyway. But the thing is, magkasama silang tatlo. Hindi na na-recognize. And then paalis sa sana. Pagdating nila sa Imos, paalis sa sana si Jesus. Yung bang pa, 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 anong tawag doon? Pa, anong tawag doon? Parang ayaw, ah, parang gusto, parang nihintay mo na yayain ka. Kasi yun ang pagkasabi ng verse. Pag anong sa, sabi, ay, sandali, sandali. Saan ka pupunta? Ah, uh, Uh, Batangas. <laughs> sabi ni Lord, sabi niya, how about dito ka na matulog? Oh, yes, good. Natulog siya doon sa Imos Kabiti. Kasama yung dalawa. At habang sila nandoon, be all of a sudden, habang sila magdi-dinner, all of a sudden, he get the bread at he broke it. At doon lang nila nakilala. Na si- Para yung dalawa sigo, si Jesus! <laughs> Question. Bakit din nila nakilala si Jesus na kasama nila naglangan? Bakit doon lang sa point na he broke the... If you got the significance of this, this will change your life. Breaking. Breaking. And you will understand with me if you have experienced God in your most broken time of your life. You will realize that it was Jesus who saved you from being totally broken, from being totally depressed, from being totally lost. And God is saying when He broke the bread, they realized, oh, that's the time that Jesus broke the bread before He gonna die. At the Last Supper, He broke the bread because He will die for us. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want your yes to be strong, your reference point should be the love of Jesus on how He died for you. The reason why you come to church is Jesus. The reason why you preach is Jesus. The reason why you sing is Jesus. The reason why you live is Jesus. The reason why you live for your family is Jesus. Everything is all about Jesus. Pag ang reference point mo ay kung paano namatay si Jesus para sa iyo, mabubuhay ka sa iyo. Oh my goodness. Ay, ang twist noon is kung kailan sila na-realize saka nawala si Jesus. Para bang pang kontra momentum nandoon ka na. Si Jesus! Biglang nawala. Saan? Alam mo yung takot mo na sumbi ako kailan mo? Okay, question. Sa so, tingin niyo bakit kung kailan siya nakilala saka siya nawala? Think about it. Here is the thing. Kasi kung kilala mo na si Jesus, hindi mo na kailangan ng kahit anong proof. Hindi mo na kailangan ng tangible proof. And somehow, dun mo nakikita na kung minsan di siya magpapakita sa iyo kasi confident siya na nagtitiwala ka na sa kanya. And that is why, sa pagkawala ni Jesus, biglang bumangon yung dalawa. And this time, ang sabi nila, sabi nila sa verse, and they run going back. They went back to Jerusalem. Kung gaano sila naglaka, this time nagmamadali sila with excitement that they gonna say sa mga kasama niyang disciples, Hey, we saw Jesus! 
And that's the thing I want to tell you today. How your yes is solid. That kind of yes, what kind of yes ba yan? Na nag yes ka kay Lord. Kasi madaling, yes Lord, yes Lord. Anong klaseng yes yan? Here's the thing that you need to understand. Anong klaseng yes yan meron sa buhay mo? It should be a coming back yes. It should be a coming back, yes. Not only that you learn something, not only that you learn from Moses up to the New Testament, not only that you see Jesus, but it should be a yes that you're going to go back to where you have started to come back to Him, to come back to your purpose, to come back to who you really are. Ang tunay na yes ay nanunumbalik sa Diyos. Ang tunay na yes, wala kang ibang babalikan kundi si Jesus. Ang babalikan mo, hindi yung may makukuha ka. Ang babalikan mo, Lord, lumayo ako sa iyo. I've been so far from you. I doubted you. Ang layo-layo ko na. But this time, my yes, I gonna come back to you. I gonna come back to my purpose. I gonna come back to my calling. Ang tunay na yes ay nanonumbalik. Ilagay mo sa relationship, same. Ang tunay na nag... Tunay na na-realize mo na, okay, yes ka pa rin ba? Yeah. Pero ano klaseng yes? Ang tunay na yes ay babalikan mo yung mahal mo. Pero pwede ba yun? Nag-yes ka pa ka? Yeah. Ano? Ah, hindi pa rin. You will understand with me that when you say yes, there must be a go. And that yes must be a coming back Yes. Tumakbo silang dalawa pabalik. Di ko alam kung paano milya ang tinakbo nila para lang makabalik. Here's the thing. You got to understand this. Kung may lakas ka palayo. Kung may lakas ka palayo, may lakas ka lalo pabalik. Kung may pera ka palayo, may pera ka pabalik. Noon nga, gumagastos ka ng grabe para sa mga bagay na walang kahinaan at nan. Ang word mo pa, sky is the limit! Ngayon na bumabalik ka, you will say, oh, everything that I got, sa Diyos na pinaglingkuran ko, sa Diyos na bigay ng second chance sa akin, I gonna give my best shot to this God because He restored my life. If you have the, the, the guts to, to go, to be far away, you have the guts to come back. Kung nung lumayo ka nga, wala kang pake sa sinabi ng tao. Ngayon pa kaya nababalik ka? Kailan ka pa nagkaroon ng sense ng isipin mo, ay wala, nag-church na siya, oh. Ay, nagbabible na, oh. Ang sabi mo is this, kung hindi ko ngayon ko pinakinggan sa panahon na ako'y lumayo, ba't ko kayo papakinggan sa panahon na ako'y bumabalik na sa Diyos? That's why that kind of yes is a coming back yes. Amen? Come on, everybody na, can we praise the Lord? It's a coming back yes. Kaya ang tunay na yes, kahit anong pagkakamali na gawa mo, babalik at babalik yan. Kahit anong pagbagsak, babalik at babalik yan. Babalik ka rin, sabi ni Gary V. It's a comeback, yes. Hindi palayo, pabalik. Saan? Kasama ng mga disciples. Okay, second appearance. Okay? Sundan nyo to. First appearance kay Mary. Second appearance dun sa dalawa. Third appearance. Yeah, hindi pa really third. The second one, as a group. Naalala niyo yung preaching natin nung pandemic? Behind closed doors? So kahit may mga disagreements sila, nagsama-sama sila sa isang room. Right? And then bigla, umap, nag-appear si Jesus. Tumaggo siya sa, sa wall. And then he suddenly appeared. All of a sudden, the atmosphere changed. Silang lahat, bago magsimula, ba't kaya nandiri dirito. Si Peter, oh, nag-deny oh. Yan, isip, yan, tumakbo din yan. Pero, sino rito nakakaunawa na pag alam mo yung sarili mong kasalanan, wala kang guts na magturo ng iba. Ituro mo si Peter, lahat kayo eh, lumayo kayo eh. Kaya lahat sila doon, ang kayo kulang, walang turuan. Pero mahalaga, magkakasama tayo. Si Peter, walang mukha na ipapakita, siya pa naman leader. Sorry na. Huwag niyo akong tingnan ng ganyan. But the thing is, ang mahalaga nandun sila to restore, to ayusin ang mali. 
because they cannot allow the disagreement to separate them. Ang tunay na yes is coming back to agreement. Hindi hiwalaya. And the thing is, nandun sila, appear si Jesus. You will understand with me that Jesus always changed the atmosphere. Who among you na galing ka sa trabaho, galing ka sa ibang buhay, pagdating mo dito, pag-praise natin, naiba ang atmosphere kasi you know that Jesus is here. Naiba ang atmosphere because you know Jesus is here. It's not even about the music, about the place, cinema to eh. Pero nag-iiba pag si Jesus nandyan. It's not about the place, it's about the person on the place. Kahit pa yan sa tabihan ng kalye, kahit pa yan sa Santorini, kahit pa yan sa garahe, kahit pa yan kahit sa, sa school, kahit pa yan sa Starbucks, if Jesus is there, He will change the atmosphere. And so, He was there. Alam niyo kung sinabi ni Lord? Two statement. Don't miss this. Or three pala. Ang unang sinabi niya, oh, amazing. He said the first word. He said, peace be unto you. Ang galing ni Lord ano? Kasi alam niyo yung nangyayari sa puso ng mga disciples. Alam niyo, walang peace eh. Kaya sabi niya, peace be unto you. Kung pwede lang, sabi ni Lord, peace. <laughs> peace be unto you. Bigyan ko kayo ng tip. Dahil dito sa verse na to. Pag may pupuntahan ka na conflict or anything ng mga disagreements, bahay man yan somewhere else, I give you a word, a powerful word. Papunta ka pala, nagdi-declare ka na, Peace be unto you. Peace be unto you. Peace be unto you. Peace be unto you. Papunta ka sa boss mo, pinatawag ka, Peace be unto you. Peace be unto you. Pinatawag ka dahil mag-aaway kayo, ayusin nyo yung disagreement nyo, Peace be unto you. Peace be unto you. You will agree with me that you will receive what you are praying for. Pero kung papunta ka doon, hate na yung daladala mo, you will reap what you have sown. But if you have peace, uh, anyway, sabi ni Lord, peace be unto you. The second word that he said is that, as God sent me, so I send you. Kung paano ako pinadala ng Diyos, piyapadala ko din kayo. Binibigyan niya ng hint doon sa go commission na sasabihin niya. And then the last one na sinabi niya, ito yung palagi na may miss sa lahat ng mga messages na nadinig ko. Na halos na isa side note, pero yun ang pinakamahalaga. Do you wanna know? Ang sabi ni Jesus sa pangatlo, na hindi na babanggit usually sa mga messages. Ang sabi niya, sabi niya una, peace be unto you. Second is, so I as God sent me, so I sent you. The third one na sinabi niya is this. He said, these words, as you forgive, so I forgive you. Kasi alam niya ang feel. Alam niya ang nangyayari sa mga disciples. Nagtuturoan sila. And the thing is, in address niya yung issue by declaring muna peace. And then sinabi niya, direction, I send you. Pangatlo, sabi niya, forgive. Do you want to know what kind of yes that's really powerful, a solid yes? It's a forgiving yes. We're done. <laughs> But you get this. Iba kasi yung mag-yes ka kay Lord. Yes, Lord! Pero may kinikim-kim ka bang sama ng loob sa iba eh. Kung minsan dinadaan mo pa yung excuse ng yes, na para bang kahit anong sabihin ng tao, kahit anong, yes okay Lord! And sabi ni Lord, tingnan ko nga kung anong klaseng yes yan. O yes lang yan para sa akin, pero walang yes yan para sa mga kapatid mo, sa brethren mo. What I'm trying to tell you is this, if that is really a solid yes, it should be a yes that knows how to forgive why we are silent. Because it's easy to yes to the Lord, but it's hard to say yes in forgiving people. Because we have a lot of reasons. Reasons like, di mo alam pas kung anong ginawa niya sa akin. So foul. Yes, I understand the hurt, but forgiveness is not for them. Forgiveness is for you. Why? If you don't forgive, here's the thing, Galit ka na nga doon sa nakagawa ng mali sa'yo, hinahayaan mo pa na i-control ka nila. Bakit? Sila yung pinag-uusapan mo, sila yung nasa isip mo, sila yung nagpapatakbo ng buhay mo. So therefore, until now, ayaw mo sa kanila, pero sila yung nagko-control sa buhay mo. Hindi ka makatulog, palagi mong pinag-uusapan, samantalang sila nandoon, nagkakape at wala silang iniisip para katungkol sa'yo. Sino ang lugi? That's 
So, ay forgiveness ay hindi naman gusto sabihin ay babalik mo yung tiwala. Ang pinag-usapan dito is not about trust. Ang pinag-usapan dito is forgiveness. When God is saying to you to forgive, He's not saying to you, magtiwala ka ulit. No, ang trust kinakailangan ng panahon. But ang yes, kailangan yung yes mo ay kailangan marunong magpatawad for your sake. Why? Because if you cannot forgive, you're punishing yourself from the pain that was inflicted by other people to you. You don't deserve that. You're beautiful. You're handsome. You're a child of God. You don't deserve to be punished. Nasaktan ka na nga. Dinudobli mo pa yung sakit na ginawa nila. And that's what they were waiting. Ang hinihintay nila ay maapektuhan ka so that ikaw ay tuluyang masaktan. But you're gonna decide today. You're gonna say, no, I'm gonna live my life. I'm gonna let this go. This bitterness in my heart should never have a space in my heart. I want to live life to the fullest. I cannot say go if I will not let go. Ang dami nakaka-relate sa likod. Amen. It's beautiful. That's amazing. I hope you understand that forgiveness is not really for those people who hurt you. That's a gift to yourself. Patawarin mo na. Yeah. Because that's a gift to yourself. And I know we are laughing, but there are so many people here that cannot laugh because it's too painful for them. There are some children here who have been abused by their parents. There are people here who have suffered from uh, a very abusive relationship. There are some teenagers here who have suffered a lot of pain caused by their siblings and their parents or their, even their friends. But I want to encourage you today. You don't have to be a slave anymore by them. It's time for you to move on with your life. It's time for you to really say, yes, go. I'm gonna let go of bitterness. I'm gonna let go of this pain. I'm gonna let go of this generational uh, hatred in myself. I'm gonna let go of the pain that has been caused by other people. I will not allow it for the remaining years of my life that they are the one controlling me. I want to live my life according to what God has planned for me. If my parents hurt me, I'm gonna let it go. If someone has hurt me by their words, I'm gonna let it go. If there are people who rejected me, talk about me, abuse me, I'm gonna let it go. I don't deserve to live life miserable because of them. I want to live life to the fullest. You don't deserve to be lonely for the rest of your life. Forgive. The biggest thing that you can give is to forgive. Wag mo nang hintayin ang Pasko. Now na. Past feelings ba yan? No. Sometimes you have to forgive and you let the feelings catch up. Kahit di mo feel, patawarin mo. And then hayaan mo na lang yung feeling sumunod. So what kung walang feeling? It's a choice. But you can... Hey parents, your children don't deserve the hurt that has been caused by other people to you. Hindi mo alam dahil di mo mapatawad na itatapon mo na yung pain sa mga anak natin. And they don't deserve it. They don't know it. Lahat kayo naging subject ng ganyang pain. Wala kang kinalaman. Ikaw ang naging subject nung naging, ikaw ang naging result. But the thing is this. Kaya nga powerful ang forgiveness. Sabi ni Lord, forgive. And so I forgive you. Kasi forgiveness is a choice. What God is saying, what Jesus is saying to the disciples, you cannot go to the direction that God, I, I want for you unless you let go of this. Hanggat hindi mo hinahayaan ang bitterness na may let go, hindi ka makakago sa gusto ng Diyos para sa'yo. Sa tingin nyo bakit? Kasi kahit anong pumunta ka, kahit anong bagay meron ka, hindi mo ma-enjoy kasi may daladala ka na hindi dapat nandyan. And sometimes, hindi kailangan ng counseling or I believe in the power of deliverance. I pray over you that by the power of the Holy Spirit who is present today, that it's not a coincidence that you are here, that all of a sudden the Holy Spirit will touch you 
and he will set you free. I am declaring right now in Jesus' name, the pain, the suffering, the frustration, the, the, the emptiness, the abuse that has been caused to you. I declare over you that in the power of Jesus, he will let you go. He will heal you. He will heal the pain. He will make you forgive. And even if it's so hard for you, I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that He will finally set you free. And He is looking at you and He's touching you right now and He's blessing you. And He's setting you free. Amen? It's so good to let it go. Pero dito nagtapos. Alam mo ba nag-appear si Jesus doon? Kailangan nyo bumalik next Sunday. Kasi may absent. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Na kahit present, nandun si Jesus. At hihintayin niya yung absent. <laughs> yung first meeting, nandun si Jesus. Wala si Tom. Si Thomas. <laughs> Sa Tagalog, Mang Thomas. Wala si Thomas. Bumalik siya next Sunday. Kasi nandun na si Thomas. Is it amazing that hindi lang si Lord para sa mga church? Nandun din siya sa babalik. Hinintay niya. Pagdating doon, hinihintay niya si Thomas. Akala mo, ikaw ang hinihintay? Hindi. Ikaw ang dapat matagal na mahinihintay ka na mangyari sa buhay mo. At ang answer ay si Jesus. So pumasok si Thomas. Sino ba yung mga disciples siguro ang image ano? Ayan, yan ang absent. <laughs> Pas, wala yan ang Sunday. Pero wala. Wala. Pumasok si Thomas. Ang sabi ni Thomas is this. Sabi ni, uh, sabi ni Jesus is this. If you don't believe me. Kasi sabi ni Thomas, maniniwala lang ako kung makita ko siya in person. So nagpakita si Jesus with bonus. Alam mo kung ano yung bonus? You got to understand, resurrected na siya. Glorified body na siya. Pero hinayaan ni Lord na ikip niya yung sugat. Sino ang magtsatsaga na pwede mo naman wala ang sugat, pero kailangan maghintay ng 40 days kasi may dapat patunayan kasi isang taong hindi naniniwala. At kailangan i-bear mo yun. Pwede naman, bumaling na nga to, oh. Pero hinayaan niya yung sugat kasi kailangan niyang ipakita sa isang taong hindi naniniwala. Sundan niyo kasi there's a meaning of this healing about yourself. And sabi ni Thomas, okay, okay, Jesus, that's you. Wow, wow. You're alive. Amen. You're awesome. Pero parang hindi pa eh. Malay ko kung AI ka. <laughs> Malay mo kung sabi ni Thomas, I will only believe if I will touch your wound. Sabi ni Jesus, don't just touch it. Put it in. And you have to understand, ang pagkapako sa krusun is not here. Kasi kung dito, i-slide siya, mahuhulog siya. The true crucifixion is here. Kasi nakahang yung bones mo sa... Hindi rito. Pag ito, lulusot siya eh, because there's a space there. But the thing is here. So the thing is, put your finger. And see, kumisa in-imagine ko, para bang slow motion lahat. Kung ako si Peter Leader, ay talaga to si Thomas. May sugat na nga si Lord, dudut-dutin pa. <laughs> Siguro si Peter gusto naman kumuha ng itak at tagpasin ko yung tenga mo eh. Sabi Peter, ay teka, nagbago na pala ako. Iba na pala ako. Pero lahat sila nakatingin, anong gagawin? Anong gagawin? Si, para mang si Kuan siguro, si Thomas. Si Jesus naman, go for it, man. Go for it. Yes, go. And then, nung may pasok niya, aba, may dugo pang pihira. Alam mo masabi ni Lord? Sabi niya. Ah, sabi ni Thomas, napasigaw siya. ay napaluhod siya. First time na may nagsabing, My Lord and my God! It's a proof na may tao na nagsabi kay Jesus na He is the Lord and He is God. And nagpatira pa siya. 
Now, what's the significance of this? Your yes, in order to be solid, it should be a coming back yes. Your yes, in order to be solid, it should be a forgiving yes. But the last one, your yes, in order to be solid, it should be a humble yes. Yung kaya mo lumuhod at magpatira pa sa Diyos. What kind of yes is humble? You want to know? It's a yes that's willing to be corrected. Because many people will say, Yes, Lord! Yes, pass! Yes, thou! Correct mo. Mas na ako sa church na to, pambira. <laughs> but the thing is, ang tunay na yes, ay willing magpakorek. Ilagay mo sa relationship yan, sa mag-asawa, sa mag-sweetheart, it also applies. Ang tunay na committed na yes, ay willing ka magpakorek sa person na nagmamahal sa iyo. Ang hindi magtatagumpay na yes ay naninindigan ka sa tama, naninindigan ka, hindi, ako ang tama, at di ka makapag-forgive, at di ka maging humble. But when you become humble and you become corrected, that's the kind of yes that God wants for us. Thomas was corrected. But it really touched me yung kailangan niyang ilagay ang finger niya sa wound ni Jesus. Do you want to know the significance? Because this will, this can heal you. This can heal the pain that has been caused by other people to you. You will be able to forgive if you do this. I know you can't. But this one, this will help you to really let it go. What's the purpose of this finger when we are dealing with other people? What's the point of this? We point this. It's your mistake. Kasalanan mo. Kasalanan mo. Lahat sila nagtuto, kasalanan mo. Ikaw, ikaw, ikaw Peter, ikaw. And as long this finger is keep on pointing on other people, your yes will always be affected. Ang sabi ni Jesus, Thomas, do you want to let it go? Do you want to really know saan mo dapat siyang pinapoint? Samo dapat pinupoint yung finger na yan. Sabi ni Jesus, here. Here. Do it. And when Thomas pointed the finger on the wound of Jesus, what God is saying is this. All the pain that has been caused by you with these people, remember, I died for that. Lahat ng kasalanan binayaran ko, no exclusion. Kaya ako magtuturo ka, dito may turo. Nakasala, mali siya, Lord. Dito may turo. And when you point your finger on the wounds and blood of Jesus, you will realize and you're gonna say, My Lord, my God. If you understand how solid the yes of Jesus for you, Why does he have to keep that wound for 40 days? It's because he's telling you. He's saying, Hey, if you're solid for me, my yes is solid for you. Here's the proof. I'm showing you my wounds. I died on the cross for you. And today, on this message, this is not just a message. Somebody here will be healed. Somebody here will finally be released. Ang tagal mo nang daladala yan. Hindi nagkataon na nandirito ka. Hindi dahil lang may nag-invite sa'yo, no? Tinaunang Diyos lahat. So that finally, you let it go. Think of the wound of Jesus. You are the reason why He died. And He loves you so much. Have you comprehend how He loves you? How He has been merciful to you? And today I declare in the name of Jesus that today is your healing day. As I mean, Pastor Jim, wala naman akong wound. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about physical wound. I'm talking about emotional wound. I'm talking about mental wound. I'm talking about family wound. I'm talking about relationship wound. 
I declare that today, you are not just hearing a message. You are being healed. God is opening your heart and searching it. Where is the wound? Where is the wound? And the Lord is healing you right now. There are some of you here who has been so wounded from your past that you can never let it go. Some of you are even have the bitterness and hatred for some people. Some of you have this fear and anger issue because of your parents, because of people did to you. Some of you has been broken with so many uh, relationships that didn't go right. You have been abused, you have been talked about, you have been gossiped, you've been, you hurt, you were hurt. But today I declare in the name of Jesus, that hurt will end today. This is your letting go. You are saying, Lord, yes, go. I want to follow you, Lord. And I want to let go of all this pain that has been caused by people. I don't want to live this no more. I want to be forgiven. And if the, uh, that's me, Lord, that I have created this mistake, I want to be humble, Lord. I want to admit my sins to you, Lord. And forgive me for what I have done. And I want to come back to you, Lord, today. And today I want to declare to all of you, God wants to give you a solid yes. But you need to be humble enough that that you're going to say, Lord, wala na akong way para mabago ang buhay ko. But I want to give everything to you. When you give it all to Jesus, He will heal you. He will sanctify you. He will save you. And if that's you, I want to invite you to stand up. And as we let the Holy Spirit bless you and change you and deal with your heart. Because God is here with you. And He wants to change you. And He wants to bless you. He wants to change you. He loves you. He loves you. He's here for you. Yeah. worshiping the Lord. Everybody close your eyes. Everybody close your eyes. No one's looking around. Just have a moment. Just have a moment with Him. No distraction. Just you and the Lord. Jesus is telling you right now. He's saying to you, I got you. I got you. I got you. I got you. I kept you. I have been so faithful to you. Jesus is saying to you, all the things that you have been through. It will never be able to topple you. You and stop you. You are here because I have a plan for you. You are here. Because he wants to release you. From that thing in your life. Somebody here. You know what I'm talking about. It's time for you to be healed. With that wound, He's healing you. But you have to give it to Jesus. Today, all God is asking from you is just surrender to Him. He's not asking you to solve everything. He's not asking you to give everything. He's just asking you to just be honest, humble, and surrender. If you do that, if you accept Jesus Christ in your heart, you're going to say, Lord, I surrender and I'm saying my yes. Just say yes. And when you say yes, 
the Lord will honor that, yes. And I feel in the Spirit, when you say that, automatically the Holy Spirit will heal you. Your wound, He will release you. And here's the thing, that's what we're going to do today. All eyes are closed. No one's looking around. If that's you, you want to release to the Lord. You want to be healed. You want to be a new person today. You want to be saved. It's Jesus who is the solution. If that's you and you want to give your life to Jesus and saying, Yes, Lord. Kahit ano itong pinagdadaan ako, Lord. Yes, Lord. If that's you, slowly, I want to pray for you. Can you testify today? You're going to say, Yes, that's me, Lord. Yes, that's me. If that's you and you want to receive Jesus Christ in your life, can you lift your hands if that's you? One, two. Wow, praise God. Three, praise Jesus, praise Jesus. Anyone else? There's another hand there. Praise God. Oh, at the back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, praise Jesus. Here's the thing what we're going to do today. Not just salvation, but if you have an emotional wound that needs to be healed. As we sing the song, can I invite you to get out of your seat? Get out of your seat and come here in the front. I want to pray for you. As we sing the song, can you just come here? Here we go. As we sing. Yeah. You Thank you, Lord. Come on, come on. Come here. Come, come, come. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, give space to these people. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Healing, healing, healing. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Woo. Yes, Lord. Come, come. Yes. coming Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Healing right now. Thank you, Lord. All right, counselors. Can I just, can you give me time to lead them so that I can lead them? All right. Thank you, Jesus. To those people who are in the front, I'm going to pray a prayer. And you can follow me in this prayer. You can close your eyes still. And you can follow me in this prayer. This is accepting Jesus Christ in your heart. You can follow me with your words. Here's the word. Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord, that you said yes to me. Today is the day of my salvation. I receive you in my heart. And I let everything go to you, Lord. And today... I accept you in my heart. Thank you, Jesus, for the forgiveness of my sins. Thank you, Jesus, for the healing. Thank you, Jesus, for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for the new life that started today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.